All right, all right. Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Yasharat Tazak 777 from the Milk Deliveries of Israel and the Sea Souls of Israel camps. Coming back at you again with another segment. First off, I would like to see all honor, thanks, praise, and glory to our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem Hamashiach Yahushai, Bahashem Rak HaKadash. And Yahweh, Yahweh Shai Barakatah to you all out there, which means the Most High and His Son Hamashiach, which the world calls Jesus. Bless you. Right? So I was on my way home and I was in the spirit, you know, and I decided to pull over to do this little short segment here, right? All thanks and praise due to the Most High for being in the spirit, right? And what I want to call this segment here is only if you're in sin are your enemies able to destroy you, right? So this video right here in particular is especially for our nations of people, man, that's of the 12 tribes that scattered abroad, right? The ones that you see that's being oppressed and afflicted on a daily basis, right? As the title reads, only if you're in sin, all right, which is the transgression of the Most High's laws, right? Or your enemies, not your friends, not the ones that you know, right? Not the ones that you say, oh, I know this one, he's pretty cool, the rest of them are bad. But this one right here is all right, right? Now, I ain't talking about that. I said your enemies, right? So only if you're in sin in the Most High's eyes are your enemies are able to destroy you, right? And the reason why it's so easily done to us across the globe, man, because we're in sin. We're living a life full of sin. We're living a life full of iniquity. And we're in all sorts of idolatry, and we don't even know it, man. And the reason why, because we don't know what sin is. We don't know what iniquity is. We don't know what idolatry is, right? Because we've been deceived all our lives, you know, so I can't fully blame it on ourselves. But when you know better, you're supposed to do better, man. Meaning you're supposed to get into these scriptures and find out what sin is according to the biblical scripture, man. And how can you repent, right? You have a lot of our people running around talking about, oh, repent, repent. But repent from what? You don't even know what to repent from. If you don't know what the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High is, right? So how can you repent from something that you don't even know about? And the only way to find that out is getting into these scriptures, man. Now, unfortunately, most of our people, when you try to even tell them something about the Bible, the first thing they do is shine it off. They say, oh, that's a fairy tales book. That's a book full of lies and deceit. Why are you following that book? That book is written by man. That's not by God, right? But contrary to popular belief, their belief, right and what they would like to believe this world is governed off the principles of this bible man a majority of people in this world follow these scriptures and they believe in this bible it's just unfortunate that most of our people don't you know what i'm saying they're ready to go off and, and worship of the gods of the false deities and philosophies and and follow false dogmas right that's why a nation of people is so screwed up man and that's the reason why we're oppressed and afflicted right we're the last one hired and the first one fired, right? Now we're dying the most from so-called COVID-19, right? Now we're the face of COVID-19. How did it go from all the way from Wuhan 400, from in China, all the way to us, all the way here? It affected Europe. It affected some parts of Africa, right? Most of China, I guess around Wuhan at least, right? Now it's here in the United States and now your so-called Negroes, and, and Hispanics and Native Americans is the face of COVID-19, right? That don't make no sense, man. That's the reason why we're deceived and screwed up out here. It's because we're living a life full of sin and we're in iniquity in the eyes of the Most High and we're in all sorts of idolatry, right? And we need to come out of that, man. And the number one way to do that is to get into these scriptures and find out who we are as a nation according to the biblical scripture, man. Now, as I said before, this is the perfect time to do it. You know, a lot of our people was quarantined off. They're not working. There's like 3 million people who filed for unemployment, right? And I'm here to tell you, man, all of these employers out here, they are not going to pay over 3 million people in unemployment. I'm sorry, man. There's no way in the world. That's why they're stressing about opening the, the, the economy again, right? Because they're, they're not going to pay 3 million people unemployment for nearly a year just to sit around and do nothing all day draining their business bank account it's not happening man you know what i'm saying so 
you know, a lot of our people, you know, we're relying on spiritual Egypt to save us. And that's not going to happen, man. You know what I'm saying? I haven't heard anything through the news or the social media or any kind of media or on the radio that shows that all of these employers is going to pay over 3 million people unemployment. And then, you know, most of those people is our people anyway. Just as I said, we're the ones that's oppressed, poor and afflicted, right? And we're the ones that's first fired and last hired, right? Our nation of people. So you're not going to get paid that money, man. I'm sorry. Now, it's a beautiful thing that the government, they're giving out these stimulus checks. Hopefully that our people can save this a little bit and do the things that they need to do instead of doing the things that they want to do, which is frivolous things, right? Unfortunately, most of our people are. But that's not going to hold you over. I mean, if that's a $1,200 check, think about it, man. All right. You're going to get a $1,200 check from the government. Say your, your mortgage and your rent is like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars $1,700. Then what? Now you're $500 short. You're $300 short. You know what I'm saying? So what good is that going to do if you got to pay your, 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 your mortgage or your rent? That's like $500 to $300 more or whatever. Right. So, I mean, you know, this, like I said, it's a good thing It's to help a lot of people out because everybody's mortgage and rent aren't that much, depending on where they live. But if you're in an area where your rent and your mortgage is that much, then I mean, there's no hope in that. man. Right. So the number one thing for our people to do is place our hope and our faith in the most high man, which is our God, our power, the God of the Bible, man. Right. The most high, the one that the creator of all things. Right. This is what we should be doing, man, as a nation of people and believing in his son, Hamashiach, with all truth and sincerity, according to the biblical scripture. Right. But our people don't know how to do that, man, because it's like I said, they think that this book is a fairy tale book. And it's unfortunate that they don't know that this book is about them. This whole entire book is about them, man. But they refuse to do the research to find that out. Right. So I'm going to bring out a couple of scriptures. That's associated with what I'm talking about, right? And I'm going to go to the book of um, Job or Job or Hob, either one you want to call it, right? Chapter 9, verse 24. Yeah, this is what our people need to do, man. That's the reason why we all screwed up out here because we don't know our God. We don't know that. The law, statute, the commandments are here to stay and that we should be keeping them. This is an obligation from the Most High himself through Moses to our nation of people to keep, man, while we're here on earth. And as long as we're not doing it, we're just all screwed up out here, man, right? Worshiping false deities and other gods and following false philosophies and dogmas out here, man, right? So in the book of Job, chapter 9, and I'm going to read 24. And it says, The earth, right? The whole earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Right? So right here is letting you know that the whole entire earth is given on to the hands of the wicked. Who's the wicked? Those are your lawless ones. The ones who's not keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, that's of the other nations, right? Even of our nation of people, the ones that's not keeping the law, statutes, commandments, you're considered a wicked person, right? As it says here, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Now think about it, man. Who's covering up all of the faces of the people of the Bible? You know, who changed the image of Christ, and which is Hamashiach? Right. Who changed the image of the most high, which is described in the book of Daniel, chapter 10. Right. Who changed the images of the most high chosen people, which are the Israelites. Right. The ancient Egyptians. Right. Who's changing all of these images, man? As it says here. The wicked. Right. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Who's the judges of the world? The saints, the most high chosen people, man, the Israelites. Right. Those are the real judges of the world right as it says in the scriptures he covereth the faces of the judges thereof if not where and who is he so if this person that's ruling and controlling the world with all of their false philosophies and doctrines and dogmas and false gods and deities then who else is it just look around man 
Let's look around and think about who's controlling the world, right? For the majority of the point, right? You know, who, who's God everyone's following, ultimately? Even though all of these, all of these different nations of people, they have like different names for their gods, but ultimately it runs back into the person who's controlling this whole world's God, man, which is the God of this world, which is the spiritual demon Satan, man, right? So think about it, man. You know, who, who what God is all nations serving right now, right? As it says here again, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So where is he? Who is he? All 18 nations, according to the biblical scriptures, are still here, man. Ain't nobody gone. Ain't nobody disappeared, right? So everyone's still here, man. So what Job 9 and 24 is talking about is a nation of people that's still here, and they're governing and tr controlling the world with all of their false ideologies, right? They're still here, man, and they're known as the wicked, okay? I'm going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 18, and I'm going to start at verse 2. So it don't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out, man. Just put one and one together, look around, do your observation, and you'll see, man, you'll see who's controlling and governing in the world, man. And whose God most people in this world are following, right? Knowingly and unknowingly. Right? Don't take a rock scientist. Figure that out, man. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, and I'm going to start at verse 2. Right? And it reads, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen. What's Babylon? This is where we at now, man. All of the places where there's a bunch of confusion going on. Where there's a bunch of false gods being worshipped. A, a bunch of false philosophies being followed, right? A bunch of false dogmas, right? So this is spiritual Babylon, man. Or any place in the world where you can worship any god you want, man, from Australia to Europe to, to where we at now, the United States to South Africa, Canada, you name it, man, right? Any place where you can worship a false god and do whatever the hell you want, you can live lawlessly, right? You don't have to keep the laws of the Most High. Right. And do all of the abominable things in the most highest eyes. Right. That's spiritual Babylon. Right. But this place where we're at now, this is like the head honcho. This is leading the pack, man. This is like the, 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 the top spiritual Babylon where we're at now. Right. And Egypt, so to speak. Right. As it says here. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, is become the habitation of devils who is the devils those are your deceivers those are your sorcerers the ones that's causing you to err and go off the straight and narrow path of keeping the law statutes the commandments of the most high right telling you to worship all of these false gods and deities and dumb idols right that's your devils there man devil just mean deceiver right it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit right so if you have a foul spirit, your spirit is defiled, man. You're not keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High. You're not staying pure, right? So how you defile your Sabbath? By simply breaking the laws, man. You're not keeping a Sabbath. You're not keeping a dietary law. You're not keeping the high holy days. You would rather keep spiritual Babylon and Egypt wicked so-called holidays, in which we call hell days, right? Which is Christmas. That have nothing to do with the Christ whatsoever. Christ is not born on December the 25th, man. Right. In the death of winter. Right. That's why we call it Xmas or me personally. I call it Xmas. I don't call it Christmas. Right. You got so-called Thanksgiving. Right. You have Easter and which really is a Starif, which is an Amorite God, a Hamite God. Right. You have um, who else you got? You got your secret societies worshiping Lucifer, the so-called light bearer. Right. You got your Allah and Muhammad with Islam. Right. The false dumb idol rock that's over there in Mecca right now in the so-called Middle East, right? You're worshiping Taoism. You're you're practicing Buddhism and 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 practicing yoga, right? To free your mind. There's no way in the scripture where it says free your mind and your spirit, man. So you can empty out your vessel, and then the next thing you know, you have all sorts of demonic spirits trying to enter into your vessel, man. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to have your mind 
and your, 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 your vessel filled with the Holy Spirit, man, of Hamashiach, the fruits of the Spirit, man. And that's what Buddhism teaches. It teaches you to meditate and to, to free your mind and to free your spirit. You're not supposed to do that, man. That's a dangerous practice right here, man. I'm, I'm here to tell you, right? It says right here. The habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Who's the birds that's being spoken about? That's the people, man. You know what I'm saying? Every unclean and hateful bird. So if you're defiling your spirit by not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, you're not keeping a dietary law, you're not keeping the high holy days, you're worshiping false gods, right? So you're unclean in the spirit, and now you're an unclean and hateful bird, right? Verse 3, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What is fornication? Fornication is sin. That's the lust of the flesh, right? And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Who's the kings of the earth? That's your presidents. That's your vice presidents. That's your prime ministers, right? Your dictators, right? That's the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth, all of your rich people, right? The merchants of the earth are wax rich through her abundance of her delicacies. What's the delicacies? That's the abominations of spiritual Babylon and Egypt here, man, right? The breaking of the dietary law, the breaking of the high holy days, worshiping false deities, right? Oppressing the most highest chosen people, which is the chosen of Israel, right? That's your delicacies, man. Verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, right? Who's the people that's being spoken about here? That's the most highest chosen people. So this is what's being spoken by the angel, man. Come out of her, right? So we're supposed to be coming out of these false deities and these false philosophies and dogmas, worshiping false gods, right? This is what we're supposed to come out of, man. And I heard a, another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. All right, so you don't want to be the partakers of spiritual Babylon and spiritual Egypt sins, man, and which is the breaking of the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High of the Bible, man. And then you receive not of her plagues. Now, what's the plagues? Unfortunately, that's going around now. That's your so-called COVID-19, right? Your so-called unemployment of three million plus people, right? They're not able to provide for themselves and provide for them families, right? They they barely might get unemployment, right? Just like I said, that's the reason why it's being stressed that we should open back up the economy because these these employers, they don't they don't want to pay three million plus people unemployment man, uh, for free for, for nearly a year, man. I mean it, it's it's not happening, man. I don't see it. Now if it does happen, hey that's a beautiful thing. And just as I said before, it's already a nice thing that we're getting these stimulus checks, you know. I mean, we could put that to good use, hopefully, that most of our people do, especially our people, right? But as it says here, again, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, verse 5. For her sin have reached unto heaven, and the most high have remembered her iniquities. What's iniquity? Iniquity is sin. What's sin? Transgression of the Most Highest laws. Now, a lot of people believe that these planes that's flying around in the sky, and they're not regular passenger planes, man. They're planes that's supposedly spraying out, um, they call it chemtrails. It's filled with all sorts of abominable chemtrails, right? So now you got this virus that's going around, and a lot of people are saying, the reason why this virus is spreading so fast all across the world is because these planes are spraying the COVID-19 out along with the other abominable uh, chemtrail that they spraying out, man. Right? So everything is up in the air. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of people, they can't really, you know, they, they, they can't base it upon facts because they don't have the actual factual. It's like they don't have the documentation stating that these planes are actually spraying these things out. But you never know, man. Everything is up in the air, right? I mean, it's not going to spray around the world so easily. And now you have a couple of hundred thousand people sick and dead, right? But ultimately, it's of the most high. Everything's possible with the most high, right? So if it's not the planes, it's definitely the most high that's doing it, right? For her iniquity 
have reached heaven, all right? And the Most High have remembered her iniquities, okay? So, I'm going to go to the book of Sirach, in which is Ecclesiasticus, in the book of Apocrypha. And I'm going to go to chapter 12, and I'm going to start at verse 3. Okay, the book of Sirach, chapter 12. Right? Slake Israel. One second. Crank this up right here, real quick. All right. All right, we're in the book of Apocrypha, chapter 12. And I'm start at verse 3, right? And it reads, There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. What is the evil? That's living lawlessly. That's breaking the law, statute, commandment to the Most High, right? As it says here again, There can no good that means no blessings of the Most High, right? The one true God of the, of the Holy Scriptures, right? There can no good come to him, anyone, him or her, anyone, right? That is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. What is your alms? That's the prayers to the Most High, the real Most High of the Bible, man. And believing in his son, Hamashiach, in all faith, truth, and sincerity. Not Allah and Buddha. Not Saint Mary, not the Hindu goddess Krishna, right? Not your Salah Sai and Rastafarian doctrine, right? Not your spiritual demon Satan and the so-called light bearer Lucifer in your secret societies and sororities and fraternities, right? You gotta give elms to the one true God, the creator of all the heavens and earth, right? The most high of the Bible, as it says here. There can no good, no blessings come to him or her that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no elms, right? I'm going to go to verse 6. Now, this is what I was saying before. For the most high hate of sinners, right? The most high hate sinners. So there's no such thing as the sinner's prayer, right? That's a false dogma that's going amongst our nation, man. And that's sort of giving us a license to sin because we already think the laws are done away with. You know what I'm saying? And we refuse to read the Old Testament. But contrary to our people's popular belief, man, the Old Testament is the New Testament, right? You know, just as the old saying goes, how are you going to know where you're going if you don't know where you came from, right? How are you going to watch a movie in the, the, the middle of the movie and figure out what the whole entire movie is about, right? Even with the books, man, even if it's not the Bible, if you're reading a book, common sense will tell you to start from the beginning, right? So you can't let nobody tell you Oh, uh, uh, disregard the Old Testament and start in the New Testament. That's where we're living now, right? And even in some parts of the New Testament, it tells you to still keep the commandments. So what? So now what? You know what? What you gonna you you just gonna disown keeping the commandments? Basically, you are because that's what you really want to do in the heart, right? What it says right here. For the Most High hate of sinners, right? So that kills that that dogma of oh, the Most High, he he hates the sin but love the sinners. Right. That false philosophy that's going around amongst our people. Right. What it says right here. For the most high hateth sinners and will repay vengeance to the ungodly. Who's the ungodly? The lawless ones, the ones who's not keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the most high or the nations of people who don't even believe in the one true God of the Bible. Right. So that's your ungodly there and keep of them against the mighty day of their punishment. So the most high is going to punish you, man. You know what I'm saying? Do you want to go around enticing people to sin and worship other gods and not keep the laws of the Most High? He's going to punish you, as it says here, right? I'm going to jump down to verse 10. Never, okay, not sometimes, never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusteth, 
so is his wickedness or her wickedness, right? No matter who they are. Though he or she humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust, in which is his wickedness, right? His perpetual hatred for you, right? Knowingly and unknowingly, you know, but most of the part they do it unknowingly, right? Secretly, right? Know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Set him not by thee, okay? That means don't hang out with him. Don't 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 go to a bar with him. Don't go to a club with him, right? Don't hang out with him, man, as it says right here. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee. Okay, so that's what they ultimately look to do, man. They play like they're your friends in your face or whatever, no matter where you are. You know, no matter if you're shopping or out and about running errands, no matter if you're working beside them, they're still your enemies, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, just as I said before, you're still going to have to deal with them, man. You know, you're going to have to work with them. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, hey, you know, enjoy the moment for what it's worth, right? Deal, deal accordingly, right? But at the end of the day, man, this is what it says right here, man. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, okay, overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place, okay? Now, that could also go for our nation of people too, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, as it says right here, he stand up in thy place. That means he's looking to take your spot, right? Those are your, your covetous. They're looking to sleep with your wife or for the woman. They're looking to sleep with your husband. They're looking to take your possessions, your car, your money, whatever. They're looking to steal from you, right? As it says here. He stand up in thy place, neither let him sit down at thy right hand, right? So what's the right hand? That's all of the righteous people, right? As the old saying goes back in the hood, right back in the day, yo, that's my ace boon coon, coon right there, right? That's my right hand man right there, my ace boon coon, right? So on your right hand, that's where all of your, 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 your homies are, man. That's your righteous people, right? Even according to the scripture with the most high. You know, Hamashiach sits down at the Most High's right hand, right? And then you have all of your wicked spirits is on the left-hand side, right? So as it says here, set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words. What are the words that's being spoken here? Right here that I'm reading to you right now. These holy scriptures, right? And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. How are you going to be pricked? You're going to be cut to the heart because you're going to remember that you've read this in the Holy Scriptures, but you didn't want to take heed to it, right? So you still want to be friends with your enemy, right? The ones that's looking to take your place, no matter who they are. They could be all of the other nations of people, or they could be of your own brother and sister, man. Some of our brothers and sisters is wicked, man. That's the reason why they're going around telling us, yo, the laws are done away with. We don't have to keep the laws. We can eat pork. We can eat shellfish. We can eat catfish, right? We can defile the Sabbath, right? According to the book of Revelation, defiling your spirit. And now you're a hateful bird, right? In the eyes of the Most High, right? So that's your wicked people of our nation, man. Okay? So these scriptures are real, man. But a lot of our people, they choose not to keep it because they want to say, oh, this is a fairy tale book. I don't know why you're reading it. You know, you're a fool for following that book. But those are the people that's going to be destroyed, man. Little do they know, right? I'm going to go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon in the book of Apocrypha 2, chapter 4, verse 12. All right. So at the end of the day, man, if we want to be redeemed and saved and protected by the Most High, man, we got to come back into keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, which means we got to get into these scriptures and find out who we are according to the biblical scripture, man. And find out what sin truthfully is and how can we repent, right? So we're in the book of um, Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Chapter 4, verse 12. And it reads, For the bewitching of naughtiness, what's that naughtiness? That's the lawfulness, right? The unlawfulness. That's the uh, the deceit, the lies, right? 
the dogma, the false philosophies that's being spread, right? When you be witching someone, you're deceiving them, you're fooling them, you're tricking them, you're using sorcery against them, right? As a witch or a warlock would do. Okay, and yes, they're real, man. A lot of, and especially in our nation of people, man, you got all our women walking around talking about their atheists and witches. You know what I'm saying? Yo, that, that shit is sad, man. It really is, right? For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. What are honest? The keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, having a pure heart and faith in Hamashiach according to the truth of the scriptures, right? How you be obscured? That means you be led out of the way off the straight and narrow. Someone telling you that the laws are done away with, that we're in for everlasting grace. Oh, you can celebrate Easter. You can celebrate Eximus. You can celebrate uh, Thanksgiving, right? All of these false holidays, right? For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest, and the wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. So if you're not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, man, and you don't have no knowledge of these scriptures right here, then you're considered a simple mind, right? That's what it's all about, man. Okay. Let's lock it. All right, so we're going to go to... the book of Judith, chapter 5. Still in the book of Apocrypha, right? And this is another thing that our people got to do, man. We got to get the book of Apocrypha, man. This is a very good, truthful book, man. A lot of our people don't even know about it. You know what I'm saying? We're ready to stick to the scriptures, which is good to stick to the Holy Bible. But the thing is, you're sticking to the plagiarized Bibles, man. A lot of these Bibles, man, they have a lot of things taken out of them. And you're not going to understand what's going on out here because you're reading a, a, a plagiarized book, man. You know what I'm saying? So you got to get the original king james version 1611 bible if you can man it's very expensive don't get me wrong but that's the way to go man and if you can't get the, the, the 1611 just get the regular king james bible and then you can buy the apocrypha too along with the other books that's associated with it right so we're in the book of judith right right here i'm gonna show it right here chapter five right and it reads then was it declared to Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Assyria, that the children of Israel had prepared for war and had shut up the passages of the hill country and had forfeited all the tops of the high hills and had laid implements in the campaign countries, wherewith he was very angry. Okay, I don't know if you can see that there. Wherewith he was very angry and called all the princes of Moab and the captains of Ammon and all the governors of the sea coast, right? Now, who's Moab and Ammon today? That's your so-called Asians, your Chinese and your Japanese, right? Your Vietnamese, your North Koreans and South Koreans, right? Your Philippines, right? Wherewith he was very angry and called all the princes of Moab and the captains of Ammon and all the governors of the sea coast. Verse 3. And he said unto them, Tell me now, ye sons of Canaan, who this people is that dwelleth in the hill country, and what are the cities that they inhibit, and what is the multitude of their army, and wherein is the power and strength? And what king is set over them, or what captain of their army? And why have they determined not to come and meet me? Right? But that king was proud, man. He felt that all people of the world, or of the West, as being spoken here, should come and meet him and, and supplement with him, right? Answer to him or whatever, right? That's the proudness of the other nations, right? As it says here. And why have they determined not to to come and meet me more than all the inhabitants of the West, right? So this is the attitude that our people have to develop today, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you look around today, if you check on the news and the social media, what's going on with the so-called Chinese and the Japanese and the so-called blacks, right? 
They're disrespecting us. They don't want to give us any service, any businesses. They're trying to kick us out of their countries, right? They don't want to rent to us. They don't want to give us any mortgage loans, right? They're using bywords towards us, calling us, you know what, you know, I'd rather not say, right? But all of these atrocities is happening to our people across the world, and it seems like we don't care, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, if they're of the children of Israel, I don't know. That's up in the air. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they can be Hamites, which are natives of Africa, right? So we don't know. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, they're still being classified as black through the media and through the news, right? To throw that deception out there to fool our people in general, right? So, but at the same time, they're still looking at us as the same people anyway. So even if there are Hamites, they're still looking at them as us. You know what I'm saying? So they they still disrespecting us on a grand scale, right? But this is the attitude that we should have, man, right? Verse 4, and why have they determined not to come and meet me more than all the inhabitants of the West, man? So that's what we should do, man, being that this is going around with our people, you know, with these so-called Chinese and Japanese, they disrespecting us. Why we got to go to their businesses? Why we got to go to their Chinese restaurants where they serve us abominable food anyway, unclean food? We don't even know if they properly clean their foods, man. But we still go into their Chinese restaurants, right? We go into their hair and beauty and nail salons, right? Spending all our money, right? But they don't come to us for a damn thing, man, right? But we're quick to go to them, right? No matter the atrocities that's being dealt to us from them, right? So this is the the, the attitude that we got to develop again, man, as it says here in verse 4 again. And why have they determined not to come and meet me? is proud self, right? More than all the inhabitants of the West. Then said Akira, the captain of all the sons of Ammon, your Japanese, let my Lord now hear a word from the mouth of thy servant, and I will declare unto thee the truth concerning this people, who's the people, the twelve tribes of Israel, right? The Most High's chosen people, which dwelleth near thee, and inhibiteth the hill countries, and shall no lie come out of the mouth of thy servant. Verse 6, this people are descendants of the Chaldeans, and they so joined here for heretofore in Mesopotamia, because they would not follow the gods of their fathers. Who is their fathers? The gods of the Mesopotamians, right? Which were in the land of Chaldea, right? So we already know the children of Israel and the Chaldeans aren't the same people, right? So the children of Israel didn't want to follow the laws that they have in Mesopotamia of the Chaldeans, right? As it says here in verse 8, For they left the way of their ancestors and worshipped the God of heaven, who is the God of heaven, that's the Most High, the creator of all things, right? The God of Israel, right? So as it says here, For they left the way of their ancestors and worshipped the God of heaven, the God whom they knew, who's they, the children of Israel, right? So this is what we got we to gotta do, man. We got to worship the God that we know, according to the biblical scripture, right? And believe in his son, Hamashiach, in all truth and sincerity, right? For they left the weight of their ancestors, which is the ancestors of the Chaldeans, right? And worship the God of heaven, the God whom they knew, which is our power, our Elohim, right? So they cast them out of the face of their gods, and they, okay, going to go to the next page here. All right. Fled into Mesopotamia and sojourned there many days. So if you're a sojourner to a certain area, that means that you're not of that lineage. You're a different nation of people. All right. So once again, that proves that. The children of Israel are not Chaldeans, in which is your, your Babylonians, right? Your ancient Babylonians, which is today known as the Ethiopians of the land of Cush, right? Which is in the east coast of Africa there. Then their God commanded them to depart from the place where they so joined and to go into the land of Canaan, where they dwelt and were increased with gold and silver and with very much cattle. So this is what happens, man. When we listen to the Most High, our God, and we follow his command, then he blesses us, man, as it says here. And we're increased with gold and silver 
and with very much cattle. Now, today, that would be your money, your so-called mammon, right? Your, your, your monopoly money that's being circulated around here, right? And your very much cattle, you can consider that today is, is cars, right? That's your cattle there. Or if you have livestock, if you have a farm or whatever, it, it is what it is, right? But it says here, and were increased with gold and silver and with very much cattle, verse 10. But when a famine covered all of the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and so joined there, right? So that's a straight cut to all of you Egyptologists out there, man, who want to follow Kemet, who thinks that the most highest chosen people are the Egyptians or the descendants of Egypt, man. Like it says right here, this is speaking about the children of Israel. As it says here, they went down into Egypt and so joined there, okay? So the Egyptians is not the chosen lineage, man, all right? No matter the nonsense that you're pushing here, all over the social media, all over the streets or whatever, you know what I'm saying? The most highest chosen people are the Israelites, man, not the Egyptos, Egypt, e Egyptians, all right? In continuation, while they were nourished and became there a great multitude, so that one could not number the nation, right? So this, like I said, we followed the Most High again, and we went down into Egypt, and he nourished us. He blessed us. We, we multiplied there, right? You know, having kids. We married, right, so to speak. That's sex, according to the biblical scripture, right? So it's said in verse 11, Salakia. Therefore, the king of Egypt, which is the Pharaoh, right, rose up against them and dealt subtly with them, right, and brought them low with labor and brick and made them slaves, right? So they dealt subtly with us, man. You know what I mean? mean meaning that they deceived us. They caused us to err, to go out of the way of the Most High, right? And to worship in their false gods, right? Probably Amun, Ra, Isis, Osiris, and Horus, right? Isis, the witch, the witch queen, right? The moon goddess, right? And wearing Egyptian unks and all of that, right? So this is what they did, man. They dealt subtly with them and brought them low, right? Meaning that we lost our frequency from the Most High, man, right? With laboring and brick and made them slaves, all right? As a matter of fact, you know, let me get that definition of subtly for you real quick to help y'all understand what we fully, we, we really, we fully talking about right here, right? Going to get that for you real quick. Already got it set up here, right? Subtility, as it's spelled here, right? All right, and it reads, the quality or state of being subtle, thinness, fineness, as subtility of air or light, subtility, noun, refinement, extreme acuteness, salubity, subtility, noun, cunning, skill, craft, all right? So this is what they did. This is what the Pharaoh of Egypt did, man. He used crafty counsel, right? As your devils always do, right? To get the things that they want, right? In a deceiving way, okay? Check this out right here. What does the word subtle mean in the Bible? Usage, crafty, prudent, subtle, definition, cunning. Usually in a bad sense, all right? Usually in a bad sense. Detailed definition, subtle, strewed, crafty. Sly, right? Sensible, okay? That means using sense, using your common sense to overthrow something, right? Your crafty counsel, your sly, right? As the old saying goes, oh, you sly devil, you, you sly person, you slick person, right? That's what sly is right there, right? Let's see if we can find something else. What does it mean when a person is subtle, right? Objective, subtler, subtilist. All right. Fine or delicate in meaning or intent. Difficult to perceive or understand. Right. So that that's what it was with the Pharaoh, man. It was difficult for us to understand his angle, where he was coming from. Right. This as we like to say back in the day. Yo, what's your angle, man? What you angling from? What you coming from? What you talking about? Right. As it says there, fine or delicate in meaning or intent. Difficult to perceive or understand. Subtle irony. 
delicate or faint and mysterious, right? And we all know someone who's mysterious, they're dangerous, man. You, you don't even know what they're thinking, right? A subtle smile, right? A subtle smile, meaning a deceiving smile, okay? As the old song goes, right, which is one of my favorites, you know, smiling faces, smiling faces sometimes, they don't tell the truth, right? <laughs> That's a true classic there, man. And yo, and that song is true. Right. As it says right here, a subtle smile. OK. Characterized by mental acuteness. OK. Or penetration, a subtle understanding. All right. So that means you don't know the angle, man. The mental acuteness, man. They basically showing no emotion. You don't even know what they're thinking. Right. So that's what it is, man. As it says here. Right. OK. I'm going to read that again. <clears throat> Therefore, right, the king, which is the pharaoh of Egypt, rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring and brick and made them slaves. <clears throat> All right, Salakia, so like verse 12. Then they cried unto their God, right, not the God of the Egyptians, not Amun-Ra, not Isis, the witch God, right, the moon God, right, not Osiris and Horus and Amun-Ra, the sun god, right? They cried unto their god, which is the most high, right? The god of the, the, the Israelites, right? And he smote all of the land of Egypt with incurable plagues, all right? So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. So the most high was destroying ancient Egypt so bad, man, with these incurable uh, plagues. They told us to get the hell out of there. You know what I'm saying? Because they couldn't deal with the Most High. And that's our power, man. That's who's going to save us. All we have to do is follow him with all truth and sincerity and believe in his son, Hamashiach. And we will be redeemed, man. And just like uh, uh, spiritual Egypt, where we're at today, right? Look what's going around now, unfortunately, for the people who don't believe. COVID-19, right? As I said before, you know, a lot of people are unfortunately dying and, you know, they're being sick. And that's because they, they really don't even know what's the cause of this, man. And that's because the most highest chosen people, the ones who's keeping his law, statutes, and commandments are finally calling out to him, man. And he's answering the prayers of his saints, right? As it says here again, verse 12. Then they cried unto their God, which is the most high, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. Verse 13, and the Most High dried the Red Sea before them, right? So that's when Moses was leading us out of the land of Egypt, and they came to the Red Sea, and the Most High parted the Red Sea for the Israelites to escape the Egyptians, right? Through Moses, okay? And the Most High dried the Red Sea before them and brought them to Mount Sinai, which is Mount Sinai, written in the, uh, the original Bible, right? And... Cades Barney, or Cides Barn, and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites, right, which is your the descendants of Ham, your your native Africans, right. And they destroyed by their strength all them of Esabon, and passing over Jordan, they possessed all the hill country, right. So what's their strength? The Most High, believing in the Most High and His Son Hamashiach with all truth and sincerity, our Elohim, our power, right? That's our strength. So through the Most High, as it says here, and they destroyed by their strength all them, right? Which is your Amorites, right? Of Eshabon and passing over Jordan, they possessed, meaning controlled, all the hill country, verse 16. And they cast forth before them the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, and the Sinchamites, and the Girgashites, which are all Africans, man. They're all descendants of Ham, right? The native Africans, right? Not the Israelites, all right? And they dwelt in that country many days. And whilst they sinned not, even though they was around all of those Hamites, right? They sinned not before their God. They prospered, okay? So when you're not sinning against the Most High, 
when you keep in the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, you're going to prosper, right? As it says right here. No matter if all of those heathens are around you and they're enticing you to follow their gods, follow Estorif, which is Easter, worship Easter, worship Tammuz, right? Put a, a big T, which you think is a cross or a crucifix on your head, and weep for Tammuz for 40 days up into Easter, right? All of that is pagan worship, man, right? And these are their gods that they're, they're, they're um, worshiping of the Amorites, right? What it says here in verse 17, and whilst they sin not before their God, they prosper because the Most High that hateth iniquity, what is iniquity? Sin. What is sin? The transgression of the Most High's laws, right? Because the God that hateth iniquity was with them. So that's the only time that the Most High is with you, man. The Most High ain't with sinners, as it says in the book of um, Sirach, right? The Most High hateth sinners, man. So if you're sinning, which is breaking the Most High's laws, the Most High ain't with you, man. Because the God that hate of iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way, which means they stopped keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, right? When they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed, right? What about people now? We're all destroyed, man. Destroyed mentally. You know what I'm saying? We're worshiping other gods, other deities, uh, false ideologies, right? Dogmas, right? We're worshiping Allah. We're worshiping Buddha. We're worshiping Scientology, the Big Bang Theory, right? We join in secret societies and fraternities and sororities, secretly worshiping Lucifer, a.k.a. the so-called light bearer, right? Which lead back to the spiritual demon Satan, right? You're worshiping the image of the beast in Christianity with over 40 different denominations, right? And that's the broad way, man. That's the broad way to destruction. How can you say that you worship the one and true only Christ but you have like 40 different denominations and 40 different ideologies and dogmas, right? That's confusion there, right? But as it says here, but when they departed from the way which appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives, all right? What happened to our ancestors? We were led captives. We were born, we were, we were brought all over the world to Europe to South Africa, right, to Brazil, South South America, to the Caribbean, to the United States, to Canada, right, you name it, right, to Mexico, right, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were bought, led captives into land that was not theirs, okay, and the temple of their God was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by their enemies, right, not the ones who you say, oh, this one is cool. The rest of them might be so-so, but this one is all right, right? But right here it says, and their cities were taken by the enemies, all right? Verse 19, but now are they returned to their God. How you return to the Most High? By keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. By believing in him in all truth and sincerity, right? Believing in the true Hamashiach according to the biblical scripture, right? That's how you return to your God, man. But now are they returned to their God and are come up out of the places or from the places, as it says here, right, where they were scattered, right, as I was saying before, the most highest chosen people, man, we're scattered all over the place, man. We're in Brazil. We're in South America, right? We're in the United States. We're in Europe. We're in South Africa. We're in Australia, India, right? Even some parts of Russia, right? Canada, all over the place, man. New Zealand, right? But now are they returned to their God and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, okay? But it's Jerusalem, that's our homeland, man. That's our sanctuary, as it says here, right? That's our humble abode, right? Where their sanctuary is and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. It was desolate when we was going out of the way of the Most High, right? Verse 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, what is the error? The lawlessness, the not keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, right? If there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, which is the Most High in the Bible, right? Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Who's the there? The children of Israel, right? The Most High's chosen people. So that's going to be our ruin, man, if we're not keeping the Most High's laws, right? Let us consider, this is what the other nations think too, man, and they notice, even to this day, they notice, man, as long as they keeping us in sin, they know the Most High isn't going to hear us, man. 
that frequency is going to be cut off, right? As it says here again, verse 21. But if there be no iniquity, what is iniquity? Sin. Sin is the transgression of the Most High's laws, right? If there be no iniquity in their nation, their nation of people, let my Lord now pass by. Lest their Lord, right, which is Hamashiach written in small letter, right, defend them and their God, which is the Most High, be for them. All right. So this goes to show that Hamashiach is being spoken of in the Old Testament. Again, man, that's another straight cut, right? Written in small letter there, as it says here. Let's their Lord, which is in small letter, defend them and their God, okay, which is the Most High. So how can that be the same person being spoken of there, right? You have Lord and you have God there, right? Okay, the Most High before them, and we become a reproach, okay, meaning defeated, all right, before all the world, all right? So the world is going to hate you, man, because they know that we're living in righteousness, we're keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High, and that you still to come against us when we're doing so, the world is going to hate you for that because the world knows that we're the chosen people, man. But when we're in sin, you know, you have the world, they hate that, and they hate us for it because they know that we're not worshiping our true God, man, right? So that's what it's about, man. As I was saying before, as the title reads, only when you're in sin... Your enemy can destroy you, right? Because if you're not in sin, if you're keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, the Most High is with you spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. You're protected around all four corners, man, right? So this is what we have to do, man. And until then, we're going to continue to be a destroyed nation and scattered amongst the nations and oppressed and afflicted, right? Every single day, man. Okay. I'm going to go to the book of Amos, chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 1. Yeah, it got pretty dark out here, so I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit, right? But no matter what, when you're in the spirit, the word must go out, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm actually feeling pretty good to do this right here. You know, when you're doing the work of the Most High, man, it's always a beautiful thing, man. Right? No matter the time of day, no matter the brightness or the darkness of the night, it's all about doing the work in the most high, right? All right, we're in the book of Amos, chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 1. Right? And it reads. Whoa. Woe well, meaning destruction, right? Woe well, to them that are at ease in Zion. What is Zion? That's Jerusalem. That's our people, man. Right? And which is really Sion. But it's written Zion here, right? Woe well, to them that are at ease in Zion. And that's what our people are, man. We're at ease. Right? You look on social media. That's all we're doing. We're fooling around, man. We're doing the next, the, the last dance craze. Right? We're posting all of our abominable foods. You know, even if we're going through all of this calamity, man, our people are still sinning. You know what I'm saying? You know, they, they want to eat their shrimp, their lobster, their crab, their catfish, their pork, their BLT sandwiches. They want to defile the Sabbath, all the, uh, all the other abominable things, right? And they, they don't care, man. So they, they at ease here, as it says here in the book of Amos, right? Chapter 6. Whoa, meaning destruction, right? To them that are at ease in Sion. And trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named the chief of the nations, right? So you can relate that to this country here. What's the chief of the nations? The United States. The United States is known as the most powerful country in the world, besides Russia and following that, China, right? And then maybe North Korea or whatever. But the United States is known as the most powerful nation in the world. We can't leave out uh, a year or two, right? So woe to them. That are at ease in Sion and trust in the mountain of Samaria. So that's what our people doing. We trust them in this country, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, the gift destroyer of the heart, as the scripture said, right? So a lot of our people, they're getting this stimulus check, man. You know, just like I said, which is a good thing, you know, but our people, it's destroying their heart, man. They're not even paying attention to what's going on around them, man. You know, people still out here getting sick. You got your wicked people out here with the virus. They upset because they have it. So now they want to spread it around to other people. 
right? All of this wickedness is still going on, man, but our people are at ease. So as it says for y'all, woe to them that are at ease in Sion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named the chief of the nations, right? That's the United States there. To whom the house of Israel came, who's the house of Israel, the most highest chosen people. We came here on slave ships, right? Our ancestors, right? We'll jump down to verse 3. Ye put far away the evil day and cause the seat of violence to come near. So that's what our people are doing, man. They putting far away the evil day. They don't even want to get into these scriptures and see what's going on, right? According to the plagues of spiritual Egypt, right? That the Most High is dealing Right, so they put away the, the evil day. You see them on social media. The only thing they want to do is have fun. They want to party, right? It's the only thing they want to do. Follow the next, the last dance craze, right? What it says here. That lie upon the beds of ivory and scratch themselves upon their couches, all right? Lounging around, right? And eat the lamb out of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the stall that chant to the sound of vow and invert to themselves instruments of music like David, right? So that's what our people was doing, man. Just like I was saying before, they want to follow the last dance craze. They want to get on social media and have fun, post their dancing videos, right? That's what our people want to do, man. That chant to the sound of the vow and invent to themselves instrument of music, right? They want to be up in a studio, Making the next rap album, right? Making the next R&B album, right? That's all they care about, right? The next, the last dance craze, right? All of this is in the Bible, man. You've seen it for yourself, man. That's how you know this is a true book. And this is our people, man, right? I'm going to read that again. The chant to the sound of the vow and the invent to themselves instruments of music, right? That's creating your, your, your next album, right? That drink wine out of bowls, right? That's what our people do. They mix all of the liquor all of the juices in one big bowl, right? That drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the chief ointments, right? But they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph, right? What is Joseph? His name was changed to the northern tribe of Israel, right? So this is what our people are, man. No matter the afflictions that's going on with our people worldwide, man, even in your own backyard, in your own neighborhood, most of our people don't care. They still want to get on social media. You know, they want to post their little funny videos or whatever. They want to post their little abominable plates of food and stuff like that, man. And they're not even grieved, man. Because the Most High is dealing with our people. He's dealing with the sinners of our nation, man. And they're thinking, just as our people think today, oh, if it ain't me, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? If it didn't hit close to home, it's all good. I'm still going to keep on doing my thing, right? So that's how you know this is our people, man. We've been doing it back in the day, and we're still doing it to this day now, right? I'm going to go to the book of Psalm, chapter 91. So there's no mistaking, man. This is our book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It got us down to a T, man. You know what I'm saying? Whether we keeping the laws of the Most High or not, it got us down to a T, man. All the way, right? All right, we're in the book of... um. Psalm chapter 91, right? And I'm going to go to verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only if you're keeping the law and statutes and commandments of the Most High, man, right? Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, right? Who's the wicked? It could be the wicked of the other nations, or it could be the wicked within our nation of people, right? Because thou has made the Lord, which is the Most High, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, right? Verse 10. There shall no evil before thee. There's going to be no evil coming around us, right? The Most High is going to protect us from the so-called COVID-19, right? From getting fired from our jobs, right? He's always going to have a way to supply for us, right? We're not going to have to worry in these hard times, right? As it says here. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. 
for he shall give his angels, okay, charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So if you're keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, man, he's going to give his angels charge over you to follow you and make sure that you're all right in whatever you're doing, right? Running errands, working, whatever you're doing, man, the Most High is going to give those angels charge over you, right? We're going to go to chapter 34 in the book of Psalm. I'm going to start at verse 4. All right. And it reads, I sought the Lord, which is the most high, right? And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. All right. What's your fears? Fears of catching a COVID-19. Fears of not being able to supply for yourself and your family because you lost your job, right? You ain't got no income coming in, right? So that's your fears. That's the fears of the people nowadays, right? I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears, verse 5. They look upon him and were lightened, okay? It's as I was saying, you know, the Most High and his son Hamashiach, they're the true light, right? Not your so-called light bearer, Lucifer, and the spiritual demon Satan in your secret societies and your sororities and fraternities, right? And your Christendom Jesuits, right? The Most High and his son Hamashiach is the true light, as it says here. They looked upon him and were lightened, all right? And their faces were not ashamed, right? So we're not going to be ashamed, man. We're going to be keeping these laws, statutes, commandments. We're going to be letting our light shine before men, right? Making our body a living sacrifice, right? Wearing the fringes, right? And we're not ashamed, verse 6. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him, right? Not love him, right? Not going around saying, oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord, right? But you're not doing anything he says, right? You're not keeping none of the commandments in the high holy days, right? And still defiling the Sabbath and the dietary law. Right, what it says right here. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them, right? Salakia, verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him, right? Not trusting in America, right? Not trusting in your stimulus checks, right? Not trusting in your job, right, or your your so-called degrees, right? All of that stuff is paper, man, right? You got to trust in the Lord, as it says here. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord. Not only love the Lord, right? You, when you fear someone, you're going to do what they say, right? Just as your parents when you was a loose, when you was a, a adolescent, right? A young youth, so to speak, right? Like my yardy men speak, you know, they're young youths, right? When you're a young youth, right? Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints. There is no want in them that fear him, not love him, not going around telling people, oh, I love the Lord, right? I love the Lord. But you're not doing anything he say, right? So it says here again in verse 9, oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, right? Which means his chosen people, the 12 tribes, right? For there is no want to them that fear the Lord. Okay, so if you're fearing the most high and keeping his commandments, man, he's going to make sure that you are right, right? In despite of it all, man, the COVID-19, the firing of three million plus people, the most high is going to make sure that you are right, man. So I'm going to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10, and I'm going to start at verse 12, all right? And it reads, and now Israel, which is the most high's chosen people, right? What doth the Lord, which is the Most High, thy God, which is your God, your power, require of thee, but to fear, okay, not love, fear, even though you can love the Lord, don't get me wrong, you can love the Lord too, but when you fear someone, you do as they say, right? But when you fear the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, to keep his commandments, of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good, 
Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God's, and the earth also with all that therein is. Verse 15. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them. Right? Even you above all people as it is this day. Okay? I'm going to let you see that for yourself here. So that's letting you know that the Most High have a chosen people, man, that he loves over all people in the earth, right? Verse 15. Only the Lord, which is the Most High, right, capital letter, had a delight in thy fathers, which is your ancestors, to love them. And he chose their seed after them, right? What is the seed after them? That's you. That's the descendants, right, of your ancestors, right? Even you above all people as it is this day. Okay, verse 16, circumcise therefore the foreskins of your heart and be no more stiff neck. All right, so don't be going around telling people that the laws are done away with because you don't want to keep the laws. Now you're trying to entice other people to go off and sin, right? That's being stiff neck, right? Circumcise therefore, right? When you're circumcised, you're keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, right? Circumcise therefore the foreskins of your heart and be no more stiff neck for the Lord. Your God is gods of gods, right? You notice it says capital for our God and of the other gods, right? Of the other nations is lower letters, right? So it's all caps for us, but lower letters for them letting you know that those are false, dumb, stupid, idol gods, man. False deities, right? It says right here. For the Lord, your God, your power is God of gods and Lord of lords, okay? There's no, there's no, um discrepancy right here man there's no confusion right this this is straightforward right lord of lords a great god a mighty and terrible okay all right so it's not oh god is good all the time god is good right like our people like to say right but what it says right here a great god a mighty and a terrible which regardeth not persons nor take reward right so the most high don't care who you are man you could be rich or poor you could be white or black to be smart or so-called stupid or whatever, you know what I'm saying, like I don't like to say. But, you know, hey, the most high don't regard persons, man, or take a reward. So if you're rich, if you're a multi-billionaire, you know what I'm saying, when it's your time to get judged by the most high, he don't care, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't give him your whole bank account, your, your 2.5 billion, right? That's not going to save you, right? Got to keep the laws of the most high, man. That's what saves you. So I'm going to go to chapter 7. And I'm going to go to verse 25. And it reads, The graven images of their gods, who the gods, the gods of the other nations, right? Ye shall burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire or control, right? That's what desire means, control, right? Thou shalt not desire the silver nor gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, okay? So that's your so-called Caesarea Borgia piece, right? As known as your Jesus piece, right? But it's, that's plated in gold and in sterling silver or platinum, right? That's your abominable graven images, man. Or your crucifix, your Tammuz cross, right? Your Egyptian unk, and which is a cross, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Your Egyptian pyramid, right? So all of this stuff, man. Your 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 Islamic, uh, uh, half crescent moon and star, right? So this is what this is, man. Those are graven images, right? The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver nor gold that is on them, nor take it onto thee, right? Take it onto thee, mean, meaning, you know, letting it hang around your neck as a chain or whatever, right? Or you're keeping it in your pocket or whatever. You're relying on it. That's your God, right? So that's how you do it when you take it onto thee. Lest thou be snared, okay? What is a snare? A trap, all right? Believing that that's your God, that that can save you. And that, that ain't up but a dumb force idol. That can't do nothing to you, man. It don't, it don't see, it don't hear, it don't taste, it don't smell, it don't do nothing. It don't even move. You take that piece off and you throw it on the floor, it's going to be there until you pick it up, right? It's a dumb force idol, right? Nor take it onto thee, lest thou be snared, right? That's, <laughs> as a matter of fact, that's like in the movies, right? You watch some zombie movie or some boogeyman uh, movie or whatever, and then you're going to have your religious Christian in there, of course, 
right? And then you have like the zombies or the boogeyman or the werewolf or whatever. They are about to get attacked by them, right? So what do the Christian do? They hold up that crucifix, that abominable graven image, right? Get back, get back, right? And then the next thing you know, they still get killed and chopped up, right? <laughs> so that right there, even in these movies, man, it's letting you know the truth, man, that these graven images can't save you, man, no matter what, right? So that's a snare or two, as it says here. Nor take it onto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord, thy God, which is your God, right? So the Most High hates that when you rely on that, right? Because he know that that's a false, dumb idol, right? Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thy house. So don't even bring it into your house, man. Don't have no crucifixes hanging on your wall. The image of the beast, right? Cesarea Borgir, uh, Mohammed from Allah and Buddha, right? Don't have th those Buddha statues sitting in the corner, right? Don't have those things in your house, man. Don't have that Egyptian ankh hanging on your wall, right? Your Salah Sa'i and Rastafarian, right? You got the, the Rastafarian red, green, and black flag laying in your house, right? With, with, with Salah Sa'i, with dreads or whatever. Or or uh, what's that singer? That that reggae singer? Damn, man. But you know what? Bob Molly. You know what I'm saying? You got a, 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 a Rastafarian flag with Bob Molly in the middle with his jatas, right? Which is a pagan custom, by the way. You know, an Eastern Indian, an Elamite, and an a ancient Babylonian custom, man. That's what that is, jatas, now known as dreads, right? But the Caucasians used to call them dreadful, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what they are, they dreadful, man, right? So do your research on that. You will see that that's an ancient pagan custom, and man, that was not a, a custom of the ancient Hebrew Israelites, man, right? Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thy house, lest thou be a cursed thing like unto it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, right? That means you should get rid of it. You should denounce it. You should say that it's a false idol. This thing can't do nothing for me, right? Thou shalt detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, meaning you should hate it, right? You should hate your crucifix. You should hate your Caesarea Borgia piece, right? You should hate your crescent moon and your star from Islam, right? You should hate your, your Egyptian unk and pyramid, right? As it says here. That's if you're of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it. For it is a cursed thing, all right? Not a blessed thing, especially for your religious Christians that say, Oh, I'm saved by the cross. I'm saved by the crucifix, right? Nah, you're really saved by Hamashiach and the spilling of his blood, man. When his blood touched the earth, that's when you was blessed. That's when you were saved. You was given a clean slate with grace. All right, not your crucifix, your your Roman Catholic torture tool for Christ, right? From the Christianum Jesuits. Okay, do your research on them too, the Christianum Jesuits, right? They're the known Antichrist, man. Those are the ones that killed our King Christ, right? We're going to go to chapter 14 in the book of Deuteronomy. All right. And I'm going to start at verse 2. Now, these are the minor things, man, that we should be keeping here. You know, even though our people don't believe so, but these things right here is an abomination to the Most High, man. And this is how we defile our bodies and our spirits, man. Right? So we're in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, and I'm going to go to verse 2. And it reads, For dar out and holy people unto the Lord, Thy God, which is your God, and the Lord have chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. All right. So I'm going to show that to you to let you know that I ain't BSing, right? As most of our people do. All right. Verse 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord. Thy God, the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, okay, the Most High himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth, all right? Verse 3, thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. What's the abominable thing? Your pork, your crabs, your lobster, your brine shrimp, your shellfish, right? Your catfish, right? Your BLTs, right? Your sea and land platter that you like to post on social media, right? 
That's your abominable thing, right? We're going to go down to verse 7. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divided the cloven hoof, right? Now, see, a lot of our people, they think that this is an Islamic thing, man. But they fail to realize that the, the unholy Furan, which is the Quran known today, was written 600 plus years after our Bible, man. So that's not a Quran thing. This is a holy scriptures thing right here, man, as it says here, right? Nevertheless, these are ye not eat. So like, let me read that again. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cut, nor of them that divided the cloven hoof as the camel and the hare, all right? So that goes to show that that's strike one for Islam, right? The, those who believe that that's from the, the unholy Quran, right? As it says here, as the camel and the hare. Now, what do your, your, your Muslims do? If they feel that they're on the brink of death, they can eat a camel or a, or a rabbit, which is a hare. And those are abominable things. Those are unclean animals to the most high. Right. So if they call themselves serving the true and only one most most high, then why does it show us here that the most high says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, that we're not to eat a camel and a hare. But that's what your, your Muslims do. Right. So that's strike one for Islam. Right. Nevertheless, these are ye. Ye shall not eat of them that chew the cut. All right. Shall not eat of them that chew the cut or of them that divided the cloven hoof. As the camel and the hare and the cooney, for they chew the cud, but the bite of not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean, okay, at all circumstances, not just on the brink of death, they're okay to eat, right? Like your, your Muslims think, right? Therefore, they are unclean unto you, okay? Now, here's the kicker with our people. And the swine, all right, what is known as the swine today, the pig, the pork, right? And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat the flesh, nor touch their dead carcass, right? So that goes for the people who's working in all of those pork plants, man. You know what I'm saying? Even that's an abomination to the most high, even though you think that you're just making money for your family to provide for yourself. But that's still an abomination to the most high, man. You're touching the, the, the swine's flesh, let alone eating it, right? And you're 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 creating it to be a consumption for people, man. That's not for human consumption. You know what I'm saying? The most high made the pig for a purpose to clean the earth, to get all of the trash up, man. We're not to eat those things, man. As it says right here, I'm gonna show you. Verse 8. Right? And the swine. Hold on one second. Let's see if I can clear this up for you here. Right? Verse 8. And the swine. Because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their carcass. Okay? So that's written there, man. That's plain. That's plain, man. So this is right here. It's concerning your shellfish, who believe that's not in the Bible, too. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters, all right? That means your oceans, your seas, your lakes, your ponds, your rivers, your streams, right? All that have fins and scales, ye shall eat, all right? All of the fish that have fins and scales, your porgies, your mullets, right? Your salmon, your whiteies, right? Your flounder, okay? Your snapper, all right? Those are the fish that have skin, scales, and fins, right? Your sardines, right? All that have fins and scales, shall ye eat and whatsoever have not fins and scales ye may not eat it is unclean on to you right so what are the things that don't have fins and scale your shellfish your brine strip your crab your lobster your catfish right catfish don't have scales they have a uh, 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 gills that they can breathe in the water right but they don't have scales and fins right so you can't eat that catfish sandwich right Season with seasoned salt and all that stuff, right? You're not supposed to have that, man. All of your uh, your oysters, your, your calamari salad, right? Your octopus salad, your caviar, right? You're not supposed to be having those things, man. That's an abomination onto the most high, man. And just these little things alone is causing us to go off, man. And unfortunately, we don't notice as a nation of people.
right? And as it says here again in verse 21, ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself, all right? So you're not supposed to eat anything that dies, right? Because you don't know what they died from. It could be a disease or whatever, you don't know. And that can make you sick, right? Gravely sick, okay? Ye shall not eat of anything that died of itself. Thou shalt give it to the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat of it. Or thou may sell it unto an alien, okay? Now your alien is just someone from a foreign country that's not of your nation of people. It's not some little green Martians that we've been taught all of our lives, right, from the planet of Mars, all right, or Jupiter or whatever, you know? This is an alien. The alien is the person that's not of your nation, that's of a different country, right? And thy gates, that he may eat it, or thou may sell it unto an alien, okay? For thou art an holy people, meaning set apart people, his favorite people, right? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And this is another one that our people fell out, man. You know, a lot of people, a lot of our nation of people, man, they don't even know what it is. This is a sin before the Most High, man, as it reads here. I'm going to let you see that too, right? I'll let you see that there. Let me see if I can clear it up for you. All right. And it reads, Thou shalt not see if a kid in his mother's milk. All right. So what that sounds like. Thou shalt not see if a kid in his mother's milk. Okay. Now, what does the women of our nation have a habit of doing in public, right? And they're saying, oh, it's a good thing to do. You know what I'm saying? No, no one's going to care. They know what we're doing, right? So all of this is in the scriptures, man. But our people don't know about it because they don't read the Bible. Their religious Christian pastors tell them, don't go to the Old Testament. Just stick with the New Testament, right? So all of these things are sin, which is the transgression of the Most High's laws, man, that our people are committing on a daily basis and they don't even know it man that's why they, we're destroyed as a nation of people spiritually mentally physically and emotionally right especially nowadays with this virus going around right i'm gonna go to the book of leviticus chapter 19 and these are more laws that our people break on a, on a daily basis that we don't know about right that keep us separated from the most high which is our true power right That's what we got to do, man. We got to get into these scriptures, man. And just as I said, this is the perfect time to do so, being that we're so-called quarantined off in our homes, right? All right. We're in the book of Leviticus, which is the Levitical laws, right? Of the Most High. Chapter 19. And I'm going to go to verse 26. Okay. And it reads, Ye shall not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall you use enchantment or observe times, right? When you observe times, you're, you're using tarot, right? You're using your horoscopes telling you, oh, my horoscope telling me I should stay in the house today. So now you're going to stay in the house, right? That's, that's stupidity, man. You know what I'm saying? You're observing times. You're, you're, you're using tarot and, and um, horoscopes, right? And it says here, ye shall not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall ye use enchantment, right? So what our people do, we like to have our meat. And that's only because we're envying the other nations, right? Now, most of our people with sense, we like our meat medium well done, right? But you have some of our people, man, they like to eat it medium rare or raw, medium raw, and all of the blood flowing out of it. You know what I'm saying? That stuff is sin, man. That's an abomination to the most high, man. You're not supposed to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what our people are doing, man. They follow behind these other nations, all the abominations of the other nations, right? And it says here again, Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment, nor observer of times. 27. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Right? So now there's a lot of discrepancy going on with that. A lot of people don't understand that. But what it's saying here is that you shouldn't mar the corner of your beard, meaning... You know how some of our brothers do, man. They get they shape up on their beards or whatever, and they shape it all sorts of ways. They have all of these different designs in them, looking like the the, the Zorro. You know what I'm saying? So you're not supposed to do that. Now that's not saying that you can't get a shape up or trim it down. You can trim down your beard if you want, but you're not to 
mar the corners of it. They're not too um shalakia. Got a fly flying around me, man. You're not to mar, and which means destroy the lining of your beard. So don't be in the barbershop getting all of these different designs, man. You know, just get a nice little trim, little shape up or whatever. Like me personally, I like to grow my beard full. You know what I'm saying? So I just trim it up and shape it up. But I don't destroy it. I don't shape it in all different sorts of fashions, right? So that's what that means, man. It doesn't mean that you can't cut your hair. It just means that you can't destroy the lining of it, the shape of it, right? Even if you're getting a little trim up on your head, you know what I'm saying? Don't destroy it. You know, don't, you know, disfigure it and get all these different parts and all that stuff and get some mohawk or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just shape it up real nice, man. You can do that. And if not, if you want to let it grow out, if you want to let it rock out or whatever, grow your beard full like I do, then you can do that, man. It's all it comes to you as long as it's not in sin, right? As my last video, you know, where there's no law, there's no sin, right? As it says here, ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard, right? Now, here it is right here. This is another thing that our people do. That's a sin before the Most High that they don't know about, right? Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, all right? Nor paint any markings upon you. I am the Lord, which is the Most High, right? So what does that sound like, man? When you making any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, or print any marks upon you, what what does that sound like, man? Okay, I don't even need to get onto that. It, it sounds just like how it sounds, right? Verse twenty nine. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. So this now this is what this land is falling to, man. It's falling to a land full of wickedness, man. You know, you're, wor you're worshiping false deities, false gods, right? Following false philosophies, right? So it's falling to wickedness, man. So it says right here, do not prostitute thy daughter. And unfortunately, that's what most women of our nation are doing, man. They got their daughters out there wearing short skirts and tight pants. They're not even 10 years old yet, man. And you got them out there wearing leggings, showing their little behinds, man. That's whoring out your daughter, man. Right? So we're not supposed to be doing that, man. This is what it says here. This is the most high, right? Do not prostitute thy daughters to cause her to be a whore, all right? And this is written in the Bible here, man. I'm going to let you say that. I'll let you see it. I got it highlighted in blue, so you might not be able to see it, but, you know, I'm going to do my best. Right? All right, so whore is in the Bible, okay? All right? Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, all right? In which in modern day terms is hope, right? Or thought, you know what I'm saying? Or slide off, jump off, or whatever, whatever you want to call it, right? Lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness, right? Or you could say whoredom as in worshiping other gods, worshiping Amen Ra, falling into Egyptology, right? You have your sisters walking around with the Egyptians' ankh on their, their necks, talking about, oh, I'm a queen, I'm a queen, right? All of that stuff is paganism, man. And it's an abomination before the Most High, as it says here. Lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness, verse 30. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths, okay, which is the seventh day rest, all right? When you look at the Gregorian calendar, you have Sunday as the first day and Saturday as the last, which is the seventh day, right? So that's your seventh day Sabbath there. And reference my sanctuary. I am the Lord, right? So you got to rank, you got to reference the sanctuary, which is the Holy Land, which is to the east, my brother, to the east, right? When you pray, you got to pray to the east with your hands spread it about and your head tilted high towards the most high, right? Verse 31, regard not them that have familiar spirits, right? Those are your witches, your warlocks, right? Your, your, your tarot readers, right? Your observer of times, the one who, who looks into the crystal balls, right? Neither seek after wizards to be defiled, okay? Not blessed, not helped when you're trying to figure out something that's in secret, right? Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your God. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear the God, I am the Lord, right? So this is what we are, man. We're supposed to respect our elders. The hoary head is the gray-headed person. 
You know, you have your gray head women, you have your gray headed men, and we supposed to show the utmost respect to them, right? Now, don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? Not all people that's of age is wise and that we should be following them because you have some old fools out there too, man, who don't know nothing about these scriptures here and they would cause you to err. You know what I'm saying? So you're not to follow and respect every old person. You know what I'm saying? You got to look for the ones that have wisdom, wisdom in these scriptures, man, that obey the Most High and his son, Hamashiach, according to the truth, with all faith and sincerity of the scriptures, right? So you're not to obey every older person because you got some old fools out there too, man. As a matter of fact, let me bring that out. I'm going to go to the book of Job, chapter 32, right? Go to the book of Job, chapter 32. And I'm start at verse 6. Job or Job or Hob, just like I said before, man. Either way you want to call it, right? Potato, potato, all right? Job, chapter 32, verse 6. And it reads, And Eliu, the son of Barachel, the Buzzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and durst not shew you my opinion. So that's what's wrong with most of our youth nowadays, man. We are afraid to show older people our opinion because we're afraid that we're going to be judged by them, right? But this is what it says right here. I said, days shall speak and multitude of years shall teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty, which is the most high, right? giveth them understanding, right? So only through the spirit of the Most High you're going to get true understanding, right? Great men are not always wise, right? So that's your great man. That's your rich man. That's your well-known man, right? Your favorite man that everybody loves, right? Or your older men or women, right? As it says here in verse 9, great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment, right? So who is your age? That's your hoary head. That was being spoken of in the book of Leviticus, right? Your gray-haired person, right? Neither do age understand judgment. They don't understand the judgments of the Most High. Like right now, they may say, oh, the COVID-19 is killing people. It's of the devil. It's of the devil. But right here in the scriptures, man, it's, it's the Most High is doing it, right? All of the works is of the Most High, man, right? So they don't understand the judgment, right? Verse 10, therefore, I said, hearken to me, I also will shew my opinion okay so that's what it is man no matter if you're young and you feel like you can't tell someone who's older anything you got to get the knowledge and truth of the of the wisdom from the most high man from these scriptures here Salakia. trying to knock something out of my way <laughs> you know what i'm saying but this is what it's all about man so no matter how old you are and if you come across a person that's older than you, but they're not wise, that doesn't mean that you have to bow down and hearken to the man that they don't have no wisdom. You know what I'm saying? One sec. Slock you. All right, so we're going to go to the book of Sirach again, chapter 42. And I'm going to go to verse 7. Y'all know how it is in the country, man. When you're out here in the car with your lights on, you got a whole lot of bugs coming around you, right? So I'm out here. I'm trying to read the scriptures and swat bugs and stuff, man. But that don't matter. They ain't going to stop me, right? The word must go out, man. Right? And after this, I'm going to head home. All right, so I'm going to bring out like two more scriptures. I ain't too far from home anyway. Right? So we're in the book of Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, and I'm going to go to verse 7. Right? And it reads, deliver all things in number and weight and put all things in writing that thou givest out or receivest in, right? So you're supposed to put all things in writing, man, no matter what you're doing, all sorts of business, man. You got to put everything in writing so there can be an understanding between two parties, right? No matter what it is, giving money, giving uh, possessions, merchandise, whatever, man, your receipts from your, your bank transactions, all of that, man. You got to have everything in writing, right? So you can have that proof. You never know when you're going to need it later on, right? 
All of this is in the Bible, man. All of this is in the Bible, right? I'm going to bring it out. Right? Verse 7. Deliver all things in number and weight, and put all in writing that thou givest out or receivest in. Verse 8. Be not ashamed, so like it, be not ashamed to inform the unwise and the foolish, all right? And the extreme age, okay? So if they're older than you and they don't have no knowledge in these scriptures, man, and you do, do your thing, man. Go in. Let them know that they're in sin. Know that. Let them know that they have to keep the law, statute, commandment to the Most High. If they're eating that pork chop sandwich, let them know, man, hey, you're not supposed to be eating that. That's an abomination. You're not supposed to be eating that shrimp, that lobster, that crab, that catfish, right? You're supposed to keep the Sabbath, right? You're not supposed to whore out your daughter, right? And it doesn't matter who the extreme age is. It could be a man or a woman. That's what it says right here, right? Be not ashamed to inform the unwise, right? The unwise is the ones that don't know about these scriptures here. The lawless ones, right? It's not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. And the foolish. Now, the foolish are the ones that do know about the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. They do know that they're a chosen people of the Most High, but they choose not to keep the laws of the Most High, right? They're ready to live in sin. Right. No matter how many times, no matter how many life or death situations they came about or how many times they done came across this truth, man. But they're so foolish. They're like, yo, I love my life full of sin so much. I'm just going to remain foolish. Right. So that's your fools there, man. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish and the extreme age that contendeth with the youth. OK, so that's what the, that's what the older people do, man. They feel that be, just because they're older, that they know more. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, if you're older, of course, you have certain experiences in this life of this world. But that doesn't mean that, you know, any and everything, man. So that's having a proud heart. Just because you're older than somebody, you think that you're naturally smarter than somebody. And that is absolutely not true, man. As it says here in the scripture. Right. And the extreme age that contendeth with those that are young. Thus shalt thou be truly learned and approved by all men living, right? So if you're a young youth, right? Like to say they're young youths. If you want to inform, you know, your, your extreme age, your extreme age, right? Then you're going to be loved and respected, man, because they're going to see you as a youth that's very smart. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just as they, they, there's an old saying that you, you can't teach an old dog new trips. That's ludicrous, man. You know what I'm saying? Because all, all dogs don't know all things, man. So that's that's false philosophy and doctrine and dogma that our people like to follow, right? So if you come across someone who's elder and they don't know about these scriptures, man, give it to them. Let them know, man. In a respectful way, of course. You know what I'm saying? Because they still got their pride, right? You can't tell them nothing. They stuck in their ways, man. Right? So I'm going to go to the book of Galatians or Galactians chapter 6. And I'm starting at verse 7. Right? So this is what it's all about, man. This is what it's all about. Right? Hold on. Let me check something. One second, Israel. Make sure my battery is good. All right. Okay. We still got enough time there. I don't want this cutting off on me. You know what I'm saying? Right? So we're in the book of Galactians or Galatians, either way you want to pronounce it, right? Don't get all simple and be like, oh, you're pronouncing it wrong. You're pronouncing it wrong. It's, it's said like this, right? So that's the reason why I'm saying it both ways. Everybody have their own choice, right, of saying it a certain way, right? So the book of Galatians or Galactians, all right? Chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse 7, and it reads, Be not deceived, the Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit, okay, so when it says right here, when you soweth to the flesh, that means you're a fornicator. 
you know, you, you, you're fulfilling the lust of the flesh, right? As it says here, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, all right? But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting, right? That's heaven. That's your humble abode. That's your rest, right? Even down on earth, that's mental stimulation, man. That's mental rest, right? A rest for all the lies and the deception that's going on in this world, right? Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. What is the well-doing? The keeping of the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High, the spreading of the truth of the gospel, right? So we're not to be weary in this. We're not to worry about this, man. We always supposed to be in good spirits, uh, uh, passing this word, right? Let us not be wearied in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we faint not, that means if we don't give up, if you fall out of the way, right? If you fall from the straight and narrow and go back into the ways of the world and eating abominable foods, defiling the Sabbath, right? Having your graven images hanging from your neck, right? So as it says here, and let us not be wearied in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith, right? So that's not only your Israelites, which is the 12 tribes, that mean particularly the ones that's keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High with all truth and sincerity, believing in his son Hamashiach according to the biblical scripture, right? Not the image of the beast, okay? All right. So this right here is going to be my last and closing scripture right here in the book of Ecclesiastes, right? Not the book of Ecclesiasticus. This is the book of Ecclesiastes in the original King James Bible, right? I'm going to go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter... 12, right, right verse 8, and it reads, these are one of my favorite scriptures, by the way, too, right, as it reads, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge, right? Yeah, he have good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs, okay? Verse 10, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words. What is those acceptable words? That's the, the scriptures here, the truth and knowledge of these scriptures here, man, right? As it says again, verse 10, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, okay? What is the written that's upright? These are these scriptures here. The law, statutes, and commandments, right? Even the words of truth, right? What's the truth? The truth of these scriptures here, right? The true image of Hamashiach and the Heavenly Father, according to the book of Daniel chapter 10, right? The words of the wise are as golds and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. Who's the shepherd? That's Hamashiach, right? He's the one true shepherd. Okay, verse 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. And much study is weariness of the flesh, right? So what's those many books? That's your unholy Quran, which is known as the Quran. That's your book of Egyptology. That's your Scientology books, right? That's your books that you receive in these secret societies and fraternities and sororities secretly worshiping Satan and Lucifer, the so-called light bearer, right? That's your many books right there, right? All these other books and your, your Christendom just suits and Roman Catholicism and Christianity, right? With 40 different denominations. You have all of these different denominations. All of them got different books. You got the Book of Mormon. You got the, the Watchtower for the Jehovah Wickedness, right? You have your tabern, uh, uh, not the tabernacle, you have your uh, Pentecostal, your Baptist, right? Your Lutheran, right? You got all these different doctrines, man. And none of them visit each other's church. You all supposed to be a part of Christianity, but you have your own so-called church, right? With your own doctrine, right? So that's your many books there, man, as it says here. And further, by these, my son, be admonished 
of making many books. There is no end. So there's going to be no end to making all of these books, man. There's always going to be a plagiarized Bible, right? And much study is a weariness of the flesh. So don't be making yourself crazy trying to read all of these books, man. This is the only book that you're supposed to stick to in life, man, which is the Holy Scriptures, right? Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High, right? Not love, okay? Fear the Most High and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of men, which is all men, right? Especially us, the true chosen people of the Most High, the children of the 12 tribes, right? For this is the whole duty of man, right? The keeping of the commandments, right? For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. So whatever you're doing in the dark, man, it's like I said about being over-righteous. Don't be over-righteous and, and judging people for their sins just because they're falling short. But you're committing all types of sin behind closed doors, right? You're hating on your own brother. You're down-talking your own brother, right? Trying to make yourself look better and good, right? So it says here, for every work shall slack here let me start that over again verse 14 for the most high shall bring every work into judgment with every every okay every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil all right so no matter what you're doing no matter if it's good or evil man you're going to get judged for that better yet a good thing than an evil thing right you know what I'm saying? So this is what we're supposed to do, man. This is the whole conclusion of the whole matter, as it says here, to fear the most high and keep his commandments, man. Right. And this is the only way that we're going to be protected by the most high and given charge of his holy angels, man. Right. And our prayers will be answered and heard if we're keeping the laws of the most high, man. So this is what we're supposed to be doing, man. You know what I'm saying? Not out here worshiping these false gods, these false deities. Your Allah, your Muhammad, your Amun Ra, your Isis, and Horus and Osiris, right? You're celebrating Easter, which is Astorif, a Hamite god, right? You're joining your secret societies and your sororities because you have faith in this world and you lost faith of the Most High. So this, this, this is why you join in these societies, man. And you're not supposed to be doing it, especially if you're of the chosen people, man. You're not supposed to be out there worshiping the Hindu goddess uh, Krishna and practicing uh, uh, Buddha, yoga, right? Believing in Scientology, becoming an atheist, believing in the Big Bang Theory. But right in the Bible, right in the very first page, man, the very first book in Genesis, it tells you that the Most High created all things, man, the heavens and the earth, right? So there's nowhere in the hell you should be an atheist, man, or, or a Scientologist, believing in the, the Big Bang Theory, man, right? And all of these false ideologies and gods, man, Right. So our people got to come up out of there, man. If we want to be re redeemed by the most high and for the most high to hear all our prayers, man, and be protected by his holy angels. All right. So I'm going to end that there. Right. And hopefully that this was enjoyable. Hopefully that this was edifying. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully that this will wake our people up to let our people know, just as the title of this video goes, the only way that your enemies, not your friends. All right can destroy you is if you're in sin in the eyes of the most high all right sin is the transgression of the most highest laws okay in all forms and sorts of idolatry all right so that's the only time that your enemy can defeat you man spiritually mentally physically and emotionally right but if you're keeping the laws of the most high you're protected man you're given charge by his holy angels man they can't even come near you all right. So that's the point that I wanted to make with this video, man, for our nation of people. All right. So it's time for me to go home and get up out of here. All right. So hopefully that this was edifying, enjoying once again to the next time. Love is love. Shalom.